Good, so I'm with Linda Zellner, hi, and uh, Linda is a project manager for Perstorp. Now we know Perstorp, 10 billion Swedish kroner turnover company, primarily known for chemicals, um, but you do buy uh, polymers and, uh, and uh, surface treatment, uh, surface coatings. Why are you extending into this particular space though? Well, around 2006 we acquired a company in the UK uh, with, based on the caprolactone chemistry and there we make polycaprolactones and they are known for being biodegradable and been used in these type of applications from before and very well studied. And then now in 2011 we expanded the capacity and that also enabled us to look into new markets and based on these features the product has, it makes sense. So that company has been inside of Perstorp for the better part of eight years. Yeah. But is this say. the sort of first time that you've come to market with this particular solution? Within the bioplastic field, yeah, that, that's the new new product from right. our side. Yeah. That's so first hitherto one. it was an additive into the polymer side, now you're moving into bioplastic. What Bioplastics is still a very small part of the total plastics uh, industry, although we know that it is the future solution. Right. But what do you see? Why now? Well, the, 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 the growth that is projected in this market and also the movement we see in the trends and the awareness, especially in, in Sweden or in the Nordics, that it's taken off, it really indicates that the timing is right. And so that makes sense for us to invest in this field and to expand our know-how and, I mean, to grow the polymer know-how. We can apply it on other materials as well. I know it's sort of outside of the brief, but, but I'm, I'm curious to know, has there been a similar kind of focus on uh, environmental issues or greener issues on the chemical side of your business too? Yeah, well, we have a quite thorough sustainable sustainability strategy where we own, look into LCA studies, carbon footprint, uh, reducing toxic components in our processes, energy consumption. So it, we cover the whole picture and then we have a nice uh, way into the bioplastics with this product. So it, it's a part of our strategy, I would say. Okay, so we're heading into a greener future, for want of a better word. Now, you have a, a, a solution here Kappa, yeah. which we're talking about. Now, this isn't commercialized yet, is it? It is. Oh, it, it is. is. I yeah, we have products that are, and then we have new developments ah, on okay. the way. So, would you want to explain to me uh, what it does exactly? How it, it's certified, I believe. Yeah, it, it's uh, biodegradable and compostable certified according to EN13432. Right. We, that's important. Sure. And then uh, it's a biopolymer enhancer, as we say. I would say you normally use it in a blend. Uh, and together with PLA or starch-based plastics, known to be quite brittle, uh, and where we need to modify properties like toughness, impact strength, elongation. Mm -hmm. And by adding our product, you can improve these properties and use them in applications that might not have been possible or even extend the use of these biopolymers. Uh, PLA has uh, had a bit of an issue with heat. Um, does, it, does it help in that respect? But we have seen in terms of processing, it can has a, have a function as a, um, a th shielding the, the temperature uh, when you process it. But in terms of in final applications, uh, well, the melting point is quite low. So then you need to have the, in the back of your head, the more polycaprolactin you add, the more careful you need to be. But it's also a formulation question. And the inclusion of the cap or additive doesn't affect the PLA, for example, going through a waste recovery stream or, or anything like that? Well, there have been extensive studies on the recycling part, and I, for me it's too early to say this, but our focus is more to improve the properties in these polymers. But if, you, if we talk about composting and, uh, and, and, and from an end-of-life perspective, it will only, I would believe, improve yeah. th this route. Okay. Um, that's commercial, that's on the market, there are, yeah. there are solutions out now with Kappa Additive. Yes. But you also talked today about uh, work that you're doing on the lactide side. Right. Now that I know is a little premature, but is there anything that you can tell us about that? Well, it's a, it's a way for us to introduce renewability in our products, but also to uh, modify them and, uh, for example, increase the melting point, because that's what you can do when you could polymerize the lactides and the Kappa Lactones. And I hope that we will have products ready for the market next year. Now we have some extensive studies to do, next but year. maybe end of next year. And are you partnering with anybody in particular, you can tell us? Uh, not
not at the moment, okay. but of course uh, it's a teamwork okay. in, on all the work we do. Well, you're a very welcome inclusion to this conference and to this industry. Thank you very it's much. It's great indeed. to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>